We've built multiple large hybrid and liquid rocket engines for different rockets over the years at Copenhagen Suborbitals, each time getting closer to our goal of safely sending an amateur astronaut to space and back again. And this goal has never felt more achievable than now with our Spica rocket coming to life. But although we have built and tested Spica's liquid oxygen and ethanol propellant tanks, we are the first ones to admit that a 100 kN BPM-100 rocket engine for Spica has been coming along slower than we hoped. However, things are starting to look much more optimistic in our propulsion department right now. So after countless battles with trying to take the BPM-100 rocket engine into production, it's a pleasure to finally bring you the biggest speaker rocket engine development update we've done in years. Hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crude crowdfunded space rocket, Spica. And Jakob, what are we up to here today? Well, I think we can call this a little bit of an Easter special, so hang around people, you'll want to hear this. Um, yes, Easter break is a very nice time of year and uh, I mean we're in this abandoned old shipyard out here and apparently we have some really weird Easter bunnies out here. They drop some very, very strange Easter eggs, like for example this little piece here. It's very, very nice, it's conical on the inside, has a bunch of holes and apparently it's also a very quality-minded Easter bunny. Uh, it's obviously high-strength steel, this one. So that's, a, that's, a, that's one Easter egg. But apparently there's been dropped like a number of Easter eggs around here and I heard there was some for you as well. I actually did find one as well. It's uh, a little bit different from yours but uh, it's also machined of the same steel material. I don't think we should get much too much into the anatomy of bunnies out here because that would be a very, very weird conversation. Yeah. Because um, apparently they also, they have like, they have this like knack for puzzles. So it took a while, but it, it, it turns out that this one very conveniently fits extremely snugly right here. Another puzzle we've been trying to solve for some years now is building a large-scale rocket engine to propel our crude space capsule above the Karman line, above the edge of space, which was the BPM-100. And um, maybe you could tell us about how that decision initially became for us to choose a BPM-100 engine for the speaker rocket. Uh, well, this is very simple. The uh, speaker rocket is a monster, um, about four tons fully loaded and uh, potential to have a crude capsule on top. So it's a very, very big rocket, uh, the biggest amateur rocket ever by leagues, as far as I know. Uh, but it needs to be propelled somehow. And there's a bit of safety concerns and considerations on how to keep this simple and straightforward. So maybe a one engine design would be uh, a good way to go. It would have the least amount of uh, failure options, for example, and um, and it would be a nice, simple design that we could build and and strap onto a giant rocket. But uh, have you ever had any consideration that that might be not the most viable option? Mm, well, the design process is always easy. Uh, you sit down, you do the numbers, it looks spectacular, and then you start looking at the parts for when you need to do a rocket engine. Uh, a hundred kilonewton rocket engine for a very, very large rocket. And then things start getting a little bit complicated. An engine for the speaker rocket is like, it's like, it would be above the height of the table here. It will also have some quite big, chunky diameters. And when you start looking at it, it becomes, um, it becomes problematic. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pieces that needs to fit together. Uh, but the whole problem is how do you machine them? Ah. That was another uh, Easter bunny around here as well. Um, because almost uh, a little less than a meter in diameter and more than a meter tall and a lot of steel, then the uh, BPM-100 engine becomes a quite a challenge to do, actually. It's always like, it's like we've been talking about this BPM-100 engine for quite a while. And frankly, perhaps we didn't have too much to show for it. Um, but that's mainly because of the challenges with being just a little bit too big. I mean, if you look at a, one of the uh, diameters of the chamber, it's huge and it's just, I mean, it can't really get into a lathe. It's a big lathe we have, but it's not, 
entirely big enough. Same thing with the mill standing over here. Um, it has a work table, but the mill that we could manage to get, uh, CNC mill we could manage to get for CS is just the table's just a little bit too small. It can't work over the entire diameter of, of that engine all the time. So uh, that's, that's, that's also why the progress has been slow with the BPM 100. There was a, a requirement for a number of, uh, of external partners because we couldn't do all of the manufacturing ourselves. And well, the world has changed a little bit as well. It's a little bit more complicated now. So um, external partners would be needed, but then you start running into issues with uh, dual use items and export control and stuff like that. So. So uh, those are quite a few gray hairs on that one. So, so if you mentioned that the speaker rocket was about a meter tall and half a meter in diameter, what? Well, the engine is, is this thing. Yeah, the engine. What well, is this it's thing? it's not entirely a meter tall, and it's not not like half a meter in diameter, but it is considerably bigger than uh, than our little research engines, the BPM fives. So if you take these parts here, very nice steel parts, they fit extremely snugly together. And you add a little bit of uh, deformation zones and a few other details. And you put this one, stack it, uh, stack it inside that one. Then suddenly you end up with not a BPM 100, but uh, you get to a BPM 25. So we've been... Uh, We've been crying wolf a little bit on the BPM 100 for a while now, and as mentioned, didn't have too much to show for it. So uh, on a dark winter evening, uh, one of the uh, designers in the engine design group posed a heretic question. Well, what if uh, instead of a BPM 100, we do something a little bit smaller? And that was after people have been uh, knocking their head against the wall, trying to find production solutions for the uh, BPM 100 engine, which was just a little bit too big on about every single dimension. Then for about, well, about two and a half hours later, um, the whole engine design group was uh, rocking through the evening and had more or less come up with uh, more progress and more solution, more production solutions for a BPM 25 than, uh, than they've been coming up with for well, more than a year on the BPM 100. And why were we so quiet about this BPM 25 for quite a few months? It's uh, been around half a year now since we've started looking into this design. Mm, well, if you cry wolf, then, uh, then you really have to make up for it if you suddenly decide to change the, uh, the recipe here. So, um, we took a slightly more discreet approach this time and we wanted to make certain that we had something to really show for it before we went out and said, oh, we have a new engine coming. Well, this time it's pretty close to being here. We have um, pretty much all the parts machined now. We uh, need to add uh, some stacking, a little production, some welding, some uh, expansion zones. Um, and then we are getting very, very close to having a new engine. A 25 kilonewton bioliquid propellant LOX ethanol engine. And uh, well, this will be the first prototype, but we'll be needing a few of those to power the speaker rocket. Yeah, so of course this one engine doesn't make up for a whole BPM 100 uh, thrust-wise. Um, so I assume there will be some design changes uh, for the speaker rocket to accommodate them. But that also brings perhaps some pros to it, uh, having a smaller engine design and uh, perhaps clustering them to get enough thrust compared to one engine. Uh, we'll, we'll take a few of the pros and cons. Uh, this list is so long and so interesting and so extensive that we're gonna have to owe you a special ses uh, session on the pros and cons of this one. But uh, the BPM 100 was a tantalizing concept because it was simple. <clears throat> if you have a number of failure modes on an engine, you just have one engine, well, there's a lower risk of things going wrong. Do you start cluster? Well, you can have the same failure, but you have more engines for it to occur. So in that sense, well, it's not necessarily a good idea or as so advantageous to have a clustered set of engines, but instead of a big one, 
But on the other hand, these ones have been machined entirely in-house using all of our own equipment, our own manpower, and just came out of raw materials. So we're sort of back in control and in the driver's seat of making these engines when and where we please. So and as I mentioned before, I think we started the design on this around six months ago. It took maybe, we went into production perhaps couple of months ago yeah. to get to this port for a point from stock material. Um, are they fully finished yet or are, are we still missing some parts and what are the next steps in, in production to finally get these ready for our validation tests? Well, the, the, uh, we have a, a little, uh, a little uh, spacing stacking that we need to do also in part of the deformation zone so that the the engine parts that get hot can can get a chance to expand a little bit without uh, without causing buckling anywhere. So that part we we need to do. We need the injector flange machined. We have a very big piece of uh, stock material lying on the floor on the table next to us. So that one is pretty much ready. And then we've been doing injector pre-drilling tests because one other thing that this uh, fantastic old um, repurposed and uh, upgraded uh, CNC mill can do for us is that it also had a high-speed spindle attached. That was something new we did. And we've been doing uh, like half a million holes, I was about to say. Uh, we've been doing a lot of drill tests because we can, we can uh, incline the head and the, uh, the high-speed spindle on the mill. And we have the round table and we have been drilling an enormous amount of holes in, uh, in some square piping that basically makes out for flow testing. So we have been, I mean, several hundred holes next to each other in each of these uh, bits that we can put water through so we can get measurements on flow capacity. So an injector for, uh, for something like this, if we stick with a uh, shower head concept, that is also completely within our own uh, control here in the CS workshop. And also this engine maybe has a little more parts than most engines people see in the industry. So that of course means that they need to be joined together and um, how difficult is the welding process of all these parts? Well, there's definitely going to be some test pieces, um, but the process of doing it is not so far-fetched. We've actually been doing it on uh, on our series of, or the latter series of BPM-5 engines, because they were also coming in bits and pieces like this, uh, fewer of them, but they still had to be joined together. And uh, with a little bit of uh, ingenuity and uh, attaching a frequency uh, converter to the lathe and uh, putting a welding torch in the tool, all the stuff like this, um, you can get to have repeatable high quality weldings which are fit for this purpose here. So we've done this before. Yeah, and I've already seen that uh, John and others have been starting some weld testing uh, already for some of these parts while the last parts are being machined so hopefully in the near future uh, you can expect a video from us going very in-depth on all the pros and cons that we were uh, deciding on when going from a BPM 100 to a BPM 25 then we'll go more into depth on actually machining all these parts and uh, lastly we'll go into into the welding process and putting all this all these parts uh, together into a final, hopefully beautifully working engine. So we hope you stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Happy rocket Easter. But wait, there's one more thing. We only managed to get this far because of your support over the years. So thank you for helping our rocket developments. And if you wish to become our monthly supporter, you can visit www.cobsub.com. Every little bit makes a big difference for us since we all do this for free in our spare time. And in return for your support, you can fly your name to space on our speaker rocket and see many more of these rocket development videos. You can also check out our merch store while you're there and watch our next video in a new shirt. But that is all for now, so thank you for watching and we'll see you next time when we get one step closer to space.